our beloved brother Paul. In the book of Romans 1, chapter, chapter 1, verse 1, it says, Paul, a servant of Christ Jesus, called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of God. Now, Paul, he was once a highly respected Pharisee. And now he's been punished, he's been beaten, he's been put in prison like someone who's a disturbance to society. And why is this? It's because he's been separated from the world, from men, and brought into the gospel. Amen. He's been cut off, brought to greater things. Yes. Now the gospel isn't about memorizing a few basic principles of the kingdom in order to get into it. It's a living message, a work that God has done in order to, in order to separate you from damnation and bring you to know him and be with him. God has invested himself into this gospel. His heart is in this work. And he didn't have to do this. He, God owed us nothing. We were the ones that had turned our backs on him. We were the ones that had done wrong and sinned. And I love this text that in Exodus, where God gives us a picture of this. It is when the Israelites had made the golden calf and God had just delivered them from Egypt. And the scriptures tell us how with vigor the Egyptians had made them work for years. So it was hard to live in Egypt. But after years of that, the Lord delivered them. And God had just given Moses details of the tabernacle. And he had given them the Ten Commandments. And he comes down from this high time. And what does he see the Israelites doing? making a golden calf. They had turned from God to another God. In his righteous anger, God is repulsed by this sight. He says, Now therefore, let me alone, that my wrath may wax hot against them, and that I may consume them, and I will make thee a great people. But they had an intercessor who was Moses. He told God, he said, Remember the promises that you made to men before? And also, brethren, just like Moses, we have an intercessor, and his name is Christ Jesus. He saved us from the ultimate wrath of God. And in our deliverance, we can see him. In the gospel, this work that he's done, our eyes are open to see his attributes. And this is amazing because there once was a barrier there. We couldn't see anything of God. And... In this gospel, we can see why he didn't destroy humanity right there in the garden. God also didn't come up with all this plan just so that he could have something to mess around with. He wants to be known. He's bringing up a people to know him. Amen. And he wants to be known so we can see who he is. Amen. We can see how he is merciful. Who is God like unto thee that pardoneth iniquity and passeth by the transgression of the remnant of his heritage. He refraineth not his anger forever because he delighteth in mercy. Amen. We can see that he is kind. In a, little wrath, in a little wrath I hid my face from thee for a moment, but with everlasting kindness will I have mercy on thee, says the Lord, thy Redeemer. And we can see how is, he is long-suffering. The Lord is long-suffering and of great mercy, forgiving iniquity and transgression. And as we can see in this renewal, there's so much to be known of God. So it's a, it's a good thing that we have now and eternity, all that time to learn about him, right? And so it, knowing that, it, it should pain you to see people only go to church for a couple of hours to give that to God, a week, a whole week, or opportunities every day that come in your life where you meet up with people and you have this open door to talk to them about the Lord, but you're too shy or too afraid of conflict to do that. But our God is good, brethren, and he'll even give you what to say. <laughs> so talk about it, boast about your God, if you're a good steward of what you know of him now, he will give you more. How else do you expect him to give it to you? Amen. So know that you have been separated from the world. Have a faith that you can say, as Paul also said in Romans, 
I am not ashamed of this gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. Good afternoon, brethren. This afternoon, I would like to speak to you about the grace of our Heavenly Father. In Acts 20, verse 24, it says, But none of these things move me, neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy in the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus, to testify the go of the gospel of the grace of God. Paul had a desire to testify of the grace of God. Paul spoke of the grace of God and what the grace that God had given him in his ministry. Ephesians 3, verse 7. Whereof I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of his power. Paul did not give himself the glory for being able to speak the truth, but he gave God the glory because God is the one who gave him the grace. God equipped Paul to do his work and to go through any trials that Paul had in his life. Now, not only did our brother Paul speak of the grace God had given him, but he also spoke of the grace that all of God's children are able to have. Grace is what God gives you to make it through whatever, takes, whatever it takes to get you through this earth and to go through trials and, com and to complete the work which he has given you. Romans 5, verse 1 through 2. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace, wherein we stand and rejo rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Those who have peace with God are his children, and are his children are the ones who have access to his grace. We have access to grace because Christ died and cleansed our sins so that there could be, be peace between us and God. Where do we receive grace? Hebrews 4, verse 16. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. Well, the source of grace can be found in God. Wherever grace is needed, God is aware of that need and will provide it. An example of God's grace displayed is in, in the account of Noah. Genesis 6, verse 6 through 8. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast and the creeping thing and the fowls of the air, for it repenteth me that I have made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Why? In Genesis 6 verse 9, it says that Noah was a just and perfect man and that he walked with God. Do you think that when God told Noah to build the ark that he did it on his own? No. God gave Noah grace to build the ark and to complete the task which he had given Noah to do. In 2 Corinthians 12 verse 9 it says, And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. God's grace was sufficient for Noah because Noah did build the ark, took his family in it, and they were saved from the flood. God's grace is fully able to supply us with what we need to get through this life. Paul was able to go through his infirmities in ministry knowing that God's grace is sufficient and that God was aware of the grace he needed. So whenever you are trying whenever you are in a trying time, look to God and remember that God's grace is sufficient for your needs. Sister Ada meets with a group, and they call themselves the partakers of grace. What does that mean? It means that they are partaking of that which God gives them and enables them to do his work. Now be sure that God will give you grace, but will you take it, and will you be a good steward of that which God gives you? First Peter 4, verse 10. As every man hath received the gift, even so minister that same one to another, as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. Where I am employed, we are constantly reminded to be good stewards of what has been given to us. God gives his children grace, and he does expect us to be good stewards of it. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 1. 
We then, as workers together with him, beseech you also that ye receive not the grace of God in vain. This is also part of being a good steward. When God gives you grace, you actually receive it, and when you do, it is not only helpful to you in your walk, but it is glorifying to God. When God gives you something, he does it for a reason, and whatever he gives us, we are to treasure and be good stewards of. Hebrews 12, verse 20, 28. Wherefore, we receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved, let us have grace, whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. If you do not receive the grace God supplies and treasure it, then you will not be able to complete that which, that which he has given you to do, nor will it be possible for you to go through trials in this earth. When we take of this grace that God gives, he is glorified. So in conclusion, I encourage you to treasure that grace of God and keep in mind that God will supply you with all the grace you need. In 2 Corinthians 9 verse 8, it says, And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that ye always having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. There is um, a hymn that's called Grace Greater Than I, Grace Greater Than Our Sin, and I want to read the last verse in that. Marvelous, infinite, matchless grace, freely bestowed on all who believe. You that are longing to see his face, will you this moment his grace receive? Amen. Good afternoon, brethren. Who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. 1 Peter 1, 5. After reading this text and considering the topic, the power of God, the names of God began to come to mind. Here are just a few of the many names of the Lord. The first that I came to mind was the King of Kings. 2 Timothy 6, 15 through 16 says, which in his times he shall show who is the blessed and only potentate, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, who only hath immortality dwelling in the light which no man can approach unto, whom no man hath seen nor can see, to whom be honor and power everlasting, amen. The Almighty. Revelation 1.8, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. The last, the last one that I have is the everlasting God. Isaiah 40.28, hast thou not known, hast thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary? There is no searching of his understanding. Many things may come to mind after reading these scriptures and pondering on these names, but a weak and powerless coward is not one of them. My first thought is led to someone with infinite power. Men cannot possibly comprehend the power of God, for no man but one has ever obtained such power. Who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear son, Colossians 1.13. To deliver us from the power of darkness, God had to be more powerful than the darkness. And being those who once lived in darkness, we know Satan is exceedingly powerful, but he is still under God's subjection. Satan cannot make a move, so to speak, without the permission from God. We see this demonstrated through our brother Job. Satan could simply touch him and kill him, but God would not allow it. As, and as much as Satan wanted to, he could not, because he is under the subjection of God. God has shown us many examples displaying his power. Here are just some. The first being, of course, creation. Genesis 1.1 says, In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Another being, he saved us from sin. 2 Timothy 1.9, Who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. And although this has not happened yet, the second coming of Christ. Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of our great God, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. Titus 2, 13 through 14. Something else are the many miracles that Jesus did while he was here. They may seem small in comparison to the many other things he has done, but without God, we can't just go out and give sight to the blind or hearing to the deaf. God has shown us that he is a powerful God, but he, he has also displayed before us many wonders and has received glory for this. Some men have had to, be, 
have, some men have had to be put in their proper places, though. The first that came to mind was Nebuchadnezzar. The account is spoken of in Daniel 4, 28 through 33. It is when Nebuchadnezzar glorifies himself for all God has given him, when he shows forth his pride, and God punishes him for this and once again displays his power and receives glory. The second would be Goliath. 1 Samuel 17, 49 through 50 says, and, God put, and David put his hand in his bag and took thence a stone and slang it and smote the Philistine in his forehead. And that the stone sunk in his forehead, and he fell upon his face to the earth. So David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and with a stone, and smote the Philistine and slew him. But there was no sword in the hand of David. While David is the one who physically killed Goliath, if he had not been a child of God, things may have turned out differently for him. For David was performing the work of God. Goliath was being prideful and dishonoring the Lord. Therefore, David brought it to a stop by the power of God. And once again, God displayed his power and received glory. We see that God's power will always prevail above men, whether they like it or not. And this is very beneficial for the children of God. For if God be for us, who can be against us? I am very thankful for the many ways by which God has displayed his power unto us. For we are able to see God has and shall continue to prevail over all those who come against him. We do serve a powerful God.